This is going to be a video series on how to save heirloom tomato seeds. And you want to make sure they're the heirloom seeds, or the heirloom tomatoes, so that the seeds you save when you grow them next year will be the actual tomatoes we have here. So I have a pink, de a rose de burn, black creme, garden peach, and a yellow pear, which is a little cherry tomato variety. So I'm going to show you the multi-step process, and this is just day one. This will take a couple of weeks for the whole process to happen with saving the seeds. So I'm just going to cut open the tomato, and you can see inside that there's all of the flesh and the membranes, and in the membrane is the seeds. So I have marked cups here with the variety that I'm using. I also took a picture ahead of time. I like to have the picture reference for come spring. I know exactly what I'm going to be growing. And all you have to do is squeeze the tomato into your cup. That is it. The membrane as well as the seeds will go in your cup. That is okay. What we're going to do is we're going to ferment this uh, mold is going to actually grow here. And it's that process that is going to allow the seeds to separate out of the membrane and we're left with seeds that we can dry and grow next year. So I have my seeds in my cup here and what I want to do is I want to cover it with water. And I just want to make sure all the seeds are covered. You know, I'm going to do probably about a half a glass here of the water. And that is it for step one. I'm just going to let this sit. I like to put it on top of my refrigerator. It's out of the way. My little hands are going to get into it. And you want to monitor the water level over the next 10 to 14 days. And you're just going to want to make sure that the seeds stay covered. So if you have a lot of evaporation, just go ahead and pour a little bit more water. Don't pour it out. Let it continue to do its thing. Um, but just go ahead and add that water to maintain about, once the seeds settle, I'll have about a three quarters of an inch to an inch of water on top. In my last video, I discussed how to, the first part of how to save heirloom tomato seeds. Uh, it's been about two weeks now, and the molding process has taken place. And like I warned in my last video, it is icky, it is stinky. But it's the only way to get the membranes off of the seeds in order to dry them to save them for planting in the spring. So I have one of my cups of heirloom seeds here. I have done nothing to it. On top, there is literally a layer of mold and some other gunk, but that's good. You want that because that's what has separated the seeds and all of my good seeds are actually on the bottom. So the easiest way to separate this is just to take a, some water, and I usually do this over my sink, it just makes it easier, but we have this set up for the video. And we're just going to pour water right into your cup. Everything's going to kind of mix up, but just give it a few seconds, and all your seeds will settle, and any of the mold and the gunk um, and also any of your bad seeds, the seeds that are not going to turn into a tomato plant, will kind of float in the top or at least kind of hang out in the water. So now I'm just going to carefully and slowly pour, and I don't want to do this quickly because my goal is to keep all the good seeds at the bottom of my cup, and they're all in there, and now I'm just going to do this process again. I'm going to add more water, kind of Swish it around, let the seeds settle. When it settles, I have some uh, gunk and mold and dead seeds and parts of the tomatoes. I don't, I told you this was gross. Floating in the water, and I'm just going to go ahead and carefully pour out the water, stopping just as maybe one of those first seeds is about to fall into my bowl of egg. One more time, should be, it should be about three rinses, really gets those seeds perfect. And I'll go ahead and just pour that out. I can leave a little bit of the water in there because I'm now going to 
put my seeds on the paper plate. It's very important that it's a paper plate because the paper is going to absorb any of the extra moisture to make sure that your seeds dry out properly. And once they're dry, you can put them in an envelope for storage. So I have here my yellow pear variety. I'm going to take my paper plate, which I've already labeled, and I am just going to actually my gunk bowl one more time. I'm just going to strain out, and it may be a little easier if I add a little bit more water in with the seeds. I'm going to strain my seeds. I have this handy little sieve. You can use a full-size one. I just like this because, like I said, this is kind of a nasty process, and this can just go in my dish dishwasher afterwards. So I'm just going to have to strain the seeds. Perfect. And I put my seeds on my paper plate. Now, these seeds are clean, so it's okay to get your hands in it now. And I just want to flatten the seeds on a single layer so that these can dry properly. Now, drying time is really going to depend on the weather. We're in the middle of August. We're going to have a hot and humid week. It's okay. It's not going to affect the seeds. They just may not dry as quickly as if it was a cooler September week. Uh, so I'm going to put these in a cool, just normal room. I don't want it in sunlight, but I want it in a darker place. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back on top of my refrigerator, the single layer, and they're going to dry. And when they are completely dry to the touch, the seeds will fall apart. If there's any clusters, you can just kind of rub them apart and they'll fall apart. And you can store this in a paper or a parchment envelope. Um, jars work great, like baby food jars, and I just store them in a cool and dark place. That is how you save heirloom tomato seeds. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out my other ones as well as my blog from thefamilywithlove.com. Thanks for watching.